Ludwig, directed by Lucino Visconti, is a monumental work from 1972, considered one of the director's masterpieces. The film chronicles the life of Ludwig II, who ascended to the throne as the King of Bavaria in the late 19th century at the age of 18. It is a grand production with a runtime of nearly four hours, characterized by its profound and elaborate storytelling. I have some rather unpleasant memories and reflections regarding this film. It was released when I was about 20 years old, nearly 40 years ago. I was quite young back then, and European films had a heavier and more contemplative tone. At that age, I found horror films to be more entertaining and a refreshing diversion. Films like, Ludwig, with their weighty and art-like visuals, presented in a subdued manner, were honestly quite challenging to watch in theaters. The person sitting in front of me seemed to share the same sentiment, constantly shifting their body from side to side. Nowadays, movie theaters are designed with considerations such as elevated seating to prevent heads from blocking the screen and hindering subtitle visibility. However, back then, there were no such accommodations, and whenever the person in front of me moved, it often obstructed the screen. As the serene and painterly visuals continued, the constant movements of the person in front of me led me to kick the seat a few times, making it clear that I was becoming irritated. Looking back, I realized that I was an unruly viewer, acting rudely due to the frustration of not understanding whether the film was meant to be interesting and the sensation of the screen being blocked. It's surprising that it didn't escalate into an argument, reflecting my youthful impulsiveness. This is the regret I have regarding the film, Ludwig. The Decline of the Gods. This time, after about 40 years, I revisited the film, and indeed, it remains a challenging film to watch in a theater. However, when I took my time and watched it at my own pace, I found it to be quite extraordinary and of exceptional quality as a cinematic work. The film consistently follows Ludwig II's journey. It doesn't depict wars or the lives of ordinary citizens. As expected of a king, Ludwig II's lifestyle is unbelievably luxurious, surpassing my imagination. Within that realm, Ludwig II, who was nurtured and cultivated to be pure, disregards political affairs and holds art as the embodiment of truth. Helmut Berger delivers a passionate performance as this unique king. He skillfully portrays the resolute young ruler, dedicated to art and gradually isolated and weakened as his reign progresses. He showcases various facets of the character with great finesse. Ludwig II is renowned for his support of Wagner, whom he idolized, but Wagner himself saw Ludwig II merely as a source of wealth. Ludwig II squandered state funds extravagantly to indulge in his patronage of the arts, while musicians took advantage of his naivety. The disparity and betrayal are evident. After ascending the throne, due to his purity, Ludwig II falls victim to the manipulations of his cousin, Elizabeth. Ultimately, he breaks off his engagement with Sophie and turns to relationships with men. This also highlights the artistic value system within Ludwig II, centered around his physical beauty. His unwavering purity, indifference to the value of money due to his position, lack of trustworthy individuals around him, and his longing for an idealized world where art represents truth. As he becomes increasingly cornered, his mind deteriorates, and the specter of madness gradually looms over him. In the end, he commits suicide by drowning, portraying a truly tragic king. Visconti's films unfold with a profound sense of painterly visuals, adding weight to Ludwig. The direction is restrained, evoking a feeling akin to watching a stage performance. Creating a film like this is no easy task. Perhaps it is a product of its time, born from a specific era.